In this video, we're going to take a look at integration using trig identities. So for this video here, we're going to take a look at free practice questions for integration using trig identities. Now, the good news for this video is we don't need to introduce anything new here. All we are really looking at is some of the key results that we've already covered in trigonometry and trig identities. So you can see those on the screen here. So feel free to pause the video, take a note of these identities and results here before you take a look at the practice questions. But other than that, there's not really much to go over here. So all I'm going to do now is jump into the free practice questions here for integration using trig identities. Starting off with question one here, then we want to find the integral of tan squared x dx. So let me just write down the original integral to begin with. So the integral here of tan squared x, so tan squared x there with respect to x. So how do we integrate this here? Well, truthfully, in its current form, we can integrate this, so we need to use a trig identity here. So what identity can we use? Well, we know that tan squared x is identical to sec squared x minus 1. So here then, we can write this as the integral of sec squared x minus 1. And again, this is with respect to x here, like so. And this might look just as complicated as the original integral here. But in this case, it's not now because we know that the integral then of sec squared x, this is a standard result, and we know that the integral of sec squared x is simply tan x. So this becomes a lot more straightforward to integrate now. We just go term by term here. So like we said, the integral of sec squared x, that is tan x. So we get tan x here. If we integrate the minus 1 with respect to x, that would be minus x there. And we don't have any limits here on our integral, so don't forget the constant of integration there plus c, and there we have it. So nice and straightforward, and that gives us the solution there to question one. Moving on to question two, now we want to evaluate the integral of sine x plus cos x all squared with respect to x from zero to pi. Now the first thing that we need to do here is expand these double brackets. So this is sine x plus cos x times by itself again. Let's write down the integral here. So from zero to pi, we have sine x plus cos x times by sine x plus cos x. Okay, and this is with respect to x here. So expanding these double brackets here, hopefully nice and straightforward. So I'm going to get sine x times sine x. That's sine squared x. So we get sine squared x here. We've got sine x times cos x. That's sine x cos x. We also do the same here with cos x and sine x. So in total then, we've got 2 sine x cos x. So plus 2 sine x cos x there. And then finally, cos x times itself again. Cos x. That gives us cos squared x. So plus cos squared x there. So that's fully expanded then. And this is with respect to x here. And including the original limits then of 0 and pi. Okay. Then we look at this here then. In its current form, it's a little bit tricky to integrate. So what I want to do here is use trig identities where we can. Well, what I notice is we have a sine squared x and we also have a cos squared x. So if I put those together, I've got sine squared x plus cos squared x. And we know that that's equal to 1. Okay. So this here and this here, that's equal to 1. So what I've got now is the integral here of 1. So it's from 0 to pi. We've got 1. I've also got this part here. So 2 sine x cos x. Again, this is another identity that we can use here. So 2 sine x cos x. This is the double angle result then. A sine. So what I've got then is 1 plus sine 2x. Okay, and this is all with respect to x then, dx. So now if we integrate this here a lot more straightforward to work with. So we're in turn by term then, integrating with respect to x. So 1, if I integrate that, I get x. We'll put this in square brackets then for the results. I get x here. Integrating sine 2x with respect to x, then what I get is minus cos 2x divided by 2, or minus a half cos 2x, whichever way you prefer to write that. So minus cos 2x all over 2. And this is from 0 to pi. Okay. 
So what we need to do now is evaluate these limits here. Remember, we start with the upper limit and then we subtract the lower limit off. So what am I going to get here then? I'm going to get pi minus cos 2 pi over 2. So pi minus cos 2 pi over 2. So obviously, make sure you're working in radians here with your calculator. Cos 2 pi. What would that give us? Well, that would give me 1. So I get minus 1 over 2 here or minus a half. I'll put this in brackets here just to keep it clear. So that's my upper limit then. We now subtract the lower limit here. So minus, well, if my lower limit here is zero, that's going to be zero minus then cos zero over two. So again, that's going to be one here. I get minus one over two. So minus minus one over two. What am I going to get here then? Well, what I get then is pi. I've got minus a half here. And then minus minus a half is the same as plus a half. So I've got pi minus a half plus a half there. So they'll cancel. And what we get left with then is simply pi. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives the solution there to question two. And finally then, if we take a look now at the very last question here, question three, where it asks us to find the integral of cos 2x all over 1 minus cos squared 2x with respect to x. So I'm going to start here by writing down the original integral. So we're integrating cos 2x all over 1 minus cos squared 2x. And that is with respect to x here. Okay. Now in its current form here, we can't really integrate this. So what we need to do is use a trig identity. And I think the easiest way to do this is rather than writing this uh, denominator here as a difference, so 1 minus cos squared 2x, I'm going to use the trig identity here. So we know that sine squared x, so sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So if I've got 1 minus cos squared 2x, if I subtract cos squared x here off both sides, what do we get? I get sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x there. Now you might notice that the argument here of this trigonometric function is slightly different. It's 2x rather than just x here, but that doesn't matter for this trig identity here. It will still be equal to 1. So in that case then, we can rewrite this original integral here. So what I've got now is the integral then. So the numerator won't change, that's still cos 2x. I've got cos 2x then, and that's all over sine squared. So rather than it being sine squared x here, it would be sine squared 2x. Okay, because the argument here is 2x. So it's going to be sine squared 2x then. Like so. And this is with respect to x. So what I can do now is write this here as a product. So what I've got now is the integral then. So we've got cos 2x over sine 2x. So cos 2x over sine 2x. And then we times this here by 1 over sine 2x. We've still got a sine 2x here. We times that by 1 over sine 2x. Okay, and this with respect to x. So dx there. Now in its current form here, what have we got? Well, I've got the um, integral here then. So it's the integral for cos 2x over sine 2x. That's the same as cot 2x. So cot 2x there. And then 1 over sine 2x. That's the same as cosec 2x. So we've got the integral of cot 2x times cosec 2x. With respect to x then. And from here, this might look a bit of a tricky integral, but hopefully you recognize this as a standard result. So this here is a standard result. We know that the integral of this then gives us, in this case, the argument is 2x. So in that case, I'm going to divide through by 2. So I get minus a half. Obviously, it becomes negative as well. So minus a half cosec 2x. So minus a half cosec 2x there. And don't forget, we have no limits here on the integral. So don't forget the constant of integration. So plus c there. Okay. And there we have it. So like you see, just by using these trig identities, we can make these integrals a lot easier to work with.
And there we have it. So that's the solution to the very last question, question three. And that brings the end of this video on integration using trig identities.